1955. Uh, no final decision action was made. No final decision or vote was taken while this board was in closed session. Okay, moving on here. Okay, we're going to eight. C, consider take possible action regarding approving a resolution and release agreement for employee Monica Borrego as discussed in closed session on the motion. Motion. Second. Motion, Mr. Flores. Second, Mr. Macias. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 No opposed. No passes. 8D, consider take possible action regarding personnel for the motion. Motion. Motion is before. Second motion is this. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We're going to do the item four. Uh, if any board member wants to pull it, just say pull. For A, consider taking action regarding approving monthly financial information as of September 30th, 2015. For B, consider taking action regarding approving budget transfers across functions. For C, consider taking action regarding approval of expenses equal to or greater than 50000 For D, consider taking action regarding approving cash investment reports for all funds as of September 30th, 2015. For E, consider taking action regarding approving request for bids 16 05 generator for educational resource center. <coughs> Excuse me. For F, consider taking action regarding approving campus target improvement plan for Kitty Hawk Middle School. Cole? Kirby Miss, I'm sorry, Kirby Middle School. Okay. So we're voting on 4A, B, C, D, and E. Can I have a motion? Seven, Mr. Flores. Okay. Got it. All in favor, any discussion? All in favor, say aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. 4D, 4F, consider take action regarding approving target improvement plan for Kirby Middle School. Who pulled that? I didn't hear it. Uh, Renee? Okay. Renee? Renee? Can I have a motion? Motion, Mr. Macias. Second, Mr. Flora. Renee? I'm confused because what I'd like to know is got several questions. Can you please tell me if this report, this plan coincides with the district? Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, of course. What it does is we look at the data and uh, we do have somebody from TVA working with us and at the campus, including somebody from my district office. And they review all the data, and based on that, they make the decision as to what it is to focus on. Excuse me, based on that what? On the data. Yeah. What did you say at the end? They focus on that to make their goals. There are a lot of small things that need to be what I want to understand is if the Office District met all the standards, why is that targeted recruitment? Because once you've been identified as a school in need of recruitment, you stay on that. This is a two years, two years, it's not. Will you be giving us a report on the You've got quarterly goals. Yes. So every quarter are you going to come back and you're going to give us a report? That's a plan. Absolutely. Absolutely. Every quarter. Mm-hmm. And you want to tell you they off of this point? Mm-hmm. You can already have it. Um, 
Ms. Michelle, I can tell you that we have the campus also in the district I work at, and yes, TEA works with us very closely with this um, for quarterly conference calls, um, and they're pretty specific on what they want you to um, address. Um, and it's a sta- it's a form that that's um, pre-populated almost, except for um, obviously your targeted goals. So, but I know that Ms. Barry could give us very detailed information if we wanted each quarter. Yes, but they want to be made other qualifying areas, so they're not listed as part of the TEA requirement for principals. And we are meeting with all the principals and going over their goals. Not as in much detail as this one, because this one has to be submitted to the Texas Education Agency, but we do meet with all the principals regarding their goals as well. Anybody else? Mr. Floyd? Yes, uh, when does this start? It's already in effect. We started this last year. Uh, we started our conversations with the Texas Education Agency. Okay, so, so quarterly, but we started the first quarter of the year, mm-hmm. and now we're on the second quarter? Uh, no, it goes in. Okay, we have, uh, we have our uh, principal and our okay. district side based uh, improvement coordinator. There are four quarters for each. Um, section. And so the first quarter started in August. We actually started this conversation in June when we got our results back, before we even had the math results back. And so the first quarter is from August to October. The second quarter starts November through January. Then the third quarter starts February, March, and then April through June. And so each quarter we set a goal for every area that we're targeting, in this case is math and reading specifically, and then the process skills and social studies and science. And so at each end of every quarter, we go back and review, but we're reviewing weekly and bi-weekly. And, and we have a visit from the person that is being represented from TEA that comes in once a week on Tuesdays, which is basically the entire day, and we review all our data then to see where we are towards making our goals. And we did the same exact plan last year when school was considered an improvement required school, and we came out of that in a year's time. And so this second plan that we wrote for this year is to make sure that we stay out of it. Mm-hmm. Part of the, when you're writing your targeted plan, is that there are seven critical success factors that the state wants you to look at. And part of that is your school climate. Uh, to see what you're doing exactly to continue parental involvement and also what are you doing to make sure that you're creating an environment where that is going to be supportive of academic excellence. And so they want to see of all the goals that you make, how is that going to impact those the areas that they have outlined in your critical success factors. Because those academic performance is Yes, ma'am. Academic starts at the very first quarter. Each quarter we have a section that we're looking into. And so what you have to do is lay the foundation for each quarter. So the first quarter we did academic excellence because that's what we wanted to start on for the beginning of the year to continue the momentum that we started at the end of last year. 
And so as we go through, each quarter has a different faction that we're going to focus on. And so we're not going to check the critical success factor, all of them for every quarter. I do have something with me tonight because what I used to do is we have to take our campus improvement plan and our targeted improvement plan and then distill it into what are going to be our focus. And I do have that with me tonight if you would like to see that. I just uh, kind of just kind of if you don't mind asking, I'll answer the question. We're approving the plan, but um, it, it looks like a, a good plan. It probably is a need of the project and ethnicity. But why would the board need to approve it? Because it's a, in the second year of a required improvement. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to vote against it. I mean, no, right. It's required. But uh, by by uh, TEA standards, we need to bring it to the board's attention. Is this a TEA mandate? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? All in favor, say aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Okay, let's go on the front. I only had one copy here. I didn't realize I was going to be having one. I'll send it to Jack. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, discussion consideration of that. I'm going 5A. Consider and take possible action regarding approving the elementary class size waiver report for 2015 16. Any motion? Motion is before. Move the field, second is before. Dr. McCoy. Uh, Mr. Sadie, members of the board, this is a process that takes place yearly with school districts. If you have certain classes at the elementary that are over the, the what the state recommends, we have to get approval from the board to request a waiver from the state. If a class is, in essence, a couple of students over, you can request a waiver. Obviously, if it's several students, 10, 15, 16 students, then we need to find a teaching position and an employee to pick up on that class. So basically, what you have in front of you is some uh, upfront information. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Yes, uh, so we're asking for waivers for the schools listed at the Mile High School, Crestwood, Kendallwood, Hopkins, Park Village, Woodlake Elementary, and Madison Park. Um, and then Rolling Meadows, Kitty Hopkins, that's one. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm reading that correctly, correct? Uh, Mr. Fields, do you want to explain that one? But the answer is yes. Yes or no, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Nice we are asking for the waiver for the ones that you see listed for the elementary schools. Mm -hmm. For the secondary schools, we're just asking that we cap them. Now, the capping is more of information for you guys to show that at certain levels where we're too high, we're not going to send any more students to those schools at that level. We would ask them to go to a nearby elementary school that has availability at that grade. So if they're already, and the ratio is 22 to 1, so if they're already at 22 or 23 to 1, then we're asking that we don't enroll any more students in, let's say, the second grade at 23 to 1, you would go down the street to Pascal where they're only at 17 or 18 to 1. Okay, so it, to me it does have sort of a procedural flair to yes. it in terms of we continue to be in compliance with our yeah. student teacher ratio. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Pascal? Yes, ma'am. Some of them are. Is it Mark Phillips? Yes, ma'am. 
Christ here? I'm not. I don't think so. Just the trust of us. It is. Wood Lake? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Parton? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Willie Mays? I don't think so. Not Miss Dale? No, it's not. Well, if they title schools, what do you need to work with? What do you need to work with? Yeah. The state's mandates that any class that's higher than 22 to 1, that you either have to get more teachers to get it in the unit or hire another teacher or, or ask for a waiver to where if you're at 23 to 1, you just don't get it. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so, so, yes, ma'am. So, is this the time of the year that it's on my Correct. Because I'm looking at kindergarten and I'm not quite sure about how second graders would adjust. But kinder and first grade, they've already had two months of the year to teach. What would it be like to be pulling kindergarten kids out of that class that they already have established? We're not asking that. What we're saying is because we, what we did was we projected how many students would want to show up at a particular campus. What we projected was almost right on the line. It was at 22, sometimes 23 to 1. Those teachers are able to handle what they have in their classes right now. So we've kept them at that level. Ask the state to have a waiver maybe for one student over in one particular class. And now any new students that come to the school were asking to go to another campus where they'd only be at like maybe 19 or 18 students in the class. But we're not asking anyone who's currently in the class to go to You're not pulling anyone out of the class if you can come in new and you go to another school. Right. If you put them over 23, they got to go to another school. Any other discussion? We're voting on Friday. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 5B, consider take possible action regarding closing of facilities after hours. Motion? Motion. Motion is for four. I'll second, Mr. Flores, Mr. Flores, this is yours. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to bring the principal uh, Park Ridge up here to speak. Yes, uh, again, if you share some of the discussion points and ideas that have been out there, reference to the issue. Mm-hmm. Sure. Good evening, guys. Um, probably the issues that we've had is that we found items that aren't appropriate for kids to be seen the next morning. And it's not the kids playing basketball. That would be an issue. It's the adults that come up there. Uh, beer cans, beer bottles, cigarette butts, cigarette packs, just trash that's left out there. So uh, we decided about three weeks ago to start locking the gates, and that keeps that from happening. As well as there's been a little bit of vandalism and possible of, uh, since it's not a public bathroom, then finding ways to relieve themselves where we wouldn't want it to. Any I got this. Okay. Mr. Ford, go ahead. Uh, things we wouldn't say, I'll say. We found condoms laying out there, found beer bottles, beer cans. These kids have been relieving themselves on the little kitties, the head sites, little tricycles. Every morning, our uh, custodians have to come in and clean the area up before anybody gets it. I think this is not the way to do it. So I'm the one that seven years ago asked that these schools be open so these kids could play basketball. Okay, they did good for about four years. And on the last few years, they come up there and they figure it's their place and they'll do what they want. When we locked the gate, they climbed the gate. They climbed over. And who they couldn't get to climb over, the little kids that were with them, they they busted the tarp overhead start by using it for a bungee jump. They went ahead and broke down the fence and used it as a jumper. 
they jumping up and down in it. I watched them one day. This is not what our schools are put out there for. So what we've done is gone ahead and found a place to set up two basketball backboards, and they can go over there and play. We don't want to just kick them out. They want to play basketball. We'll look for a place for them. We did look for a place. We found one. Now we just spend budget money and get the basketball that drops and we can put up for them. So what I'm asking is that we pass this so we got a little tease when they start climbing the fence again. We can tell them they're breaking the ball. I believe we'll have some signs being made, uh, Dr. Montoya, to put up out there. Yes, we, we will put some signs. And again, we don't want to keep some of the high school kids of, you know, totally at zero. We found an area away from the school where we can put up some goals and that allows them to have an area but we protect the integrity of the playground and the elementary school. About a year ago, we found a couch out there. And it wasn't just sitting in there, it wasn't even just a sitting. It's a long walk out from there. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm asking the board to do. Do you have a specific motion, Mr. Ford? Yes, it's, uh, the motion is right there. It's considered and take back it regarding closing of facilities after hours. And I'm just talking about Park Village at this time. I'd like to make an amendment to that. I'd like to make an amendment to it then and uh, consider only Park Village for being closed. Do so, I second? Mr. Ford, we discuss it. I've got Mr. Macias. I've got no more. Mr. Macias? Yes, I actually had a question in the previous motion, but I think I can actually adapt that question to this particular amended motion. Um, our current policy, is it, does it designate that our facilities will be open? Um, I just want to make sure that this, this item doesn't go contrary to what our standard policies are. The documentary and Mr. Filter, I mean, what's our current policy for uh, having our facilities open after hours? I don't believe that we have a policy for the district for facilities after hours, but our procedure is to allow people to go on to the property after hours and use the playground and the basketball court. Sure, our procedures are written anywhere? For the procedures? Is this a practice? It's a practice. Okay, yes. okay. so there's nothing that's actually written out? There's nothing board approved. So. Okay, I, I do remember when I first year on the board that this was a discussion, so I do remember Mr. McCoy bringing this up. Uh, with, uh, so, uh, the uh, alternative is that we looked at the big department with the municipalities in the area to still offer some sort of out obviously not the kind of happening at the park really, but that they're used for appropriate purposes. Uh, in my district, uh, Elop Elementary, uh, they have a basketball court. We're looking at possibly even taking some steps there. But there is a basketball court within the community that kids can go play. And so I don't know if that's something that, that is open and available in, in near Park Village that we can reroute our kids to. In Park Village, they've got a partner coming in the street, but... Um, Not another school facility, a public facility, like no, Bear no, County no. or... Well, you could go to Kirby. I'm sorry, you could go to Wagner High School, but it's a considerable way to... Yeah, I mean, that might be a good opportunity to talk to our commissioner or talk to you, uh, so we can some respect to put something together. Mm -hmm. Just a thought, to, like in the area that's unincorporated Bear County, there is a, a basketball court that really does help. Yes, so. Mr. Ford, uh, Mr. Fields, is uh, Mr. Hartman have opened the gate? I don't have to check that. No, they don't. I'll answer the question for you. Does uh, any of the schools in our area have open gates? Yes. Sir. Which ones are they? Wagner High School. Wagner High School is a guy that I've talked about elementary. Okay. Well, but he was saying open in that particular um, I think Kirby does as well. I know Kirby has a gate, and they try to keep. I just talked to the principal the other day, and she said, "But um, she says that she keeps the gate open, and then when it's after hours, it's darker at night, then they ask them to to stay in the store." And what time do you close? I didn't ask them. 
that you see, she told me. Mm-hmm. And that's more or less to let them go out and walk the track, right? She said to use the basketball court and to use the track is what she, really, she told myself and Dr. Martin. Are they doing the same thing over there that they're doing at Park Village? Park Village is kind of the same thing. And they're asking that the kids can come on the property right after the adventure. At one time, uh, we discussed uh, leaving it up to the discretion of the principal. I think we do that throughout the district district for, for most of the campuses. If you were to go to Olympia or Kittigoff, as Ms. Michelle stated, you'll find that they allow people to go on those campuses. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Flores. Yes. Thank you, man. It might be a solution for the exact area of the city of San Antonio. And um, I know that when I worked with the Parks Department, there was some grants being done with the boom. And I know the lady that they get those. If we could uh, get some land to them, because we have the land over there where the old park village was where it burned down. You know, and there's, there's like a park over there, you know, by Sunrise, behind Sunrise on the Ben Dingle Lane, and uh, there's a park that they put, they, that the city put in there with that kaboom grant, that's what it's called. Crazy. And, uh, and if we can get the city to, you know, maybe look at that, maybe there's something we can do with that land, because we're not doing anything with that land right now. But for it to Correct. The, the recommendation for that area that Mr. LaFleur came up with, there is a concrete slab, and we talked to our maintenance department, and we're really trying to create an area where we can... It, the basketball courts that you find at the elementaries are the regulation basketball courts that you're going to find at you know, the, the, the high and secondary school. We have the room out there to create something. We would just have to get the goals and we'll see if we can get our well, that's what I'm saying. If we can get that grant, and, yes. and I've talked to her about it, and she said, let me know, and I'll help, you know, whatever. Yes. And, and if you see the uh, basketball court that they put over in, uh, behind Sunrise, yeah. you know, it's a uh, nice little turf, and I mean, you know, it's, it's not a bad situation. Maybe as the Florida's, we could go ahead with Mr. Fields and let's just set up a meeting and see what we can do. And you said it was no. It's, it's Kaboom. It's Kaboom Grant. I'll, I'll get you the name of the lady yes. at the park. Okay. So it is the city of San Antonio. Maybe we can bring them out there. And, uh, and maybe they can help us with that project and see what happens. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ford? I mean, again, we have a park that's right around the corner from there. It's called Little Garden Memorial Park. It's over on Gibbs Hall. It's probably from the high school, from the uh, elementary, maybe two quarters of a mile away. That's true, but those kids aren't going over there. They're going over to. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I asked to have, uh, when they re- renovated that park just recently, I asked the city to go ahead and uh, put some basketball. Paraphernalia in there, a court, mm-hmm. and they bluntly refused because he said it draws the wrong people. Yeah, and they put a, instead they put a lighted uh, walk park, mm-hmm. a lighted walking area for the people. Put new tarps up on top of the uh, equipment. So yeah, it's a playground, right? But if you go to the one behind Sunrise, it's a basketball court. Well, if they won't go to the one over there, they still won't go to the one in Sunrise. Do that. Okay, Jackie, what's the what's the rest of this? I just thought I'd uh, move on here. I, I thought I would uh, give a few more words. Um, the situation in, uh, in the Eloff area um, is controlled by the county. They actually fence that park off and do the same thing with ours. But um, I would imagine the city of San Antonio would consider that too. So I, I think still the area is a strong recommendation for um, But that's how it's being taken care of. Jackie, what's your motion to amend? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? No. No, Mr. Flores. 
Jackson. And he ran on the uh, Rex Burrow original menu. And he was a possible action regarding closed facilities after hours. So we got to wait for that. On for your eating session. On for your say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mr. Ford is now. Motion to. Okay, five feet. The city takes possible action regarding approving revisions to the Hall of Honor criteria. Motion, Mr. Motion. Motion, Mr. Flores. Second. Second, Mr. Ortoil. Discussion. Or Mr. Uh, Dr. Ortoil. Uh, members of the board, uh, I know that at previous meetings, this board has asked that we look at the possibility of uh, changing the format, if you will, of the people that might be selected to the Jetson ISD Hall of Honor to, to allow for others. But at this point, Mr. Lindstrom, if you'd go up there and, and maybe share exactly what that was about, and, and, and then we'll go from there. Absolutely. Um, board members, what we, uh, what we basically came up with, uh, we had a uh, committee of uh, Mr. Stewart, uh, Ms. Clark, myself, um, we also had uh, input from Mr. Hernandez as well, basically uh, to look at what we could do with the Civic Hall of Honor uh, criteria that would be a little bit more inclusive in terms of not just um, having Judson ISD graduates um, be inducted into the Hall of Honor because we, we have uh, a number of examples of people who made major contributions to this district but weren't necessarily Judson ISD graduates. Um, and so what we did was, uh, if, if uh, you see in your packet there, um, we tried to put in the changes in yellow there. Um, we shifted the Hall of Honor um, criteria into basically two chunks. The first chunk uh, there you see under the uh, Civic Hall of Honor header uh, addresses the criteria and the qualifications for those uh, folks who are JISD graduates. Then below that we have uh, the criteria, which is a bit uh, shorter, but uh, for those nominees who are not Judson ISD graduates, but yet have some very good qualifications and have made significant contributions. Um, so uh, the other uh, changes that we, we made basically dealt with the number of nominations that uh, an individual could have uh, and still remain eligible for nomination. Um, we changed the, uh, the wording to after, instead of seven years, we changed that to seven nominations instead. Uh, because that would give that individual more possibilities to be nominated uh, as opposed to having, like, a, it was just a confusion uh, issue there where we wanted to, to make sure that it was clear that if a person was nominated seven times but yet was not inducted, that that eligibility then expired. If that makes sense. So, uh, we clarified that uh, on both uh, the civic and the athletic uh, Hall of Honor qualifications. So, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Any discussion? Any more discussion? Thank you. Um, my first question, Mr. Lindstrom, is I'm looking at page 95 of those changes. Tell me why there is no evaluation. Scoring. Evaluation for scoring? There's no value scoring system to be able to come up with. Well, typically the, the scoring, uh, when we have the nominations that are put forth, the uh, selection committee that the Board of Trustees puts together. Uh, they will essentially vote yes or no based on the qualifications that are lined out within each nomination that is put forth and submitted. That selection committee uh, goes over each one of those nominees, the qualifications uh, that go along with each nominee, and then they vote yes or no whether that person goes into the follow-up. So there's not necessarily 
uh, has never ever been any kind of a, a scoring system in terms of does this person score a, a nine or a ten in leadership in JISD or in service for JISD? It wasn't set up necessarily that way. Uh, if the board deems that that needs to be changed, we can certainly take a look at that as well. But basically, the scoring was done in a way where each selection committee member voted yes or no on a particular nominee. And if a nominee uh, had the majority number of votes from the committee, they were uh, inducted into the hall. If they did not have the majority, then they were not. Well, that makes sense for civic, but not for athletic. You have a criteria for an athletic code, um, and that's what I'm asking about. Why is there no value system for the athletic it wasn't originally set up that way. We can, like I said, uh, we can take a look at that as well if that's uh, what the board wishes. Um, but uh, when this was uh, revised, I guess the last time in 2011, mm -hmm. um, that was the structure that we worked with. Um, and each uh, nominee that was put forth uh, before the selection committee, uh, athletic and civic. Uh, they were basically given each of those submissions. They looked over their qualifications um, and their accomplishments, and they deemed themselves uh, in their own mind whether they were going to vote as well for each individual member. Well, it has been changed. Yes, that's true. It has been changed. I'm well aware of the criteria because when this person came back, I can't tell you what year it was. But when this whole idea first came about, I was the one that wrote this criteria. So I know that writing this criteria, if there was some type of evaluation given, mm -hmm. that probably when it was revised, it was removed. I mean, it made it very well. I, I got here in 2012, and this is what it read like to me when I got here. It wasn't that original. So we'll, I mean, we can certainly, uh, whatever the board wishes to do, uh, if that uh, is to be a consideration that you uh, would want us to, to work on, uh, we can certainly do that. It would seem to me like a more fair way of being able to assess rather than say, and then to just vote with that, whatever the committee says, if there would be some type of a scoring, if there was some type of scoring, then the committee would never well, I, I know that, uh, that some of these nominations uh, also are not just individuals, they're also teams, and that might be a little bit more problematic. Maybe that was the reason why it was changed, um, but uh, that's just speculation on my part. I have no more questions. Thank you for Mr. Lincoln, can you tell me why or if any discussion was held regarding um, the selection committee, including or actually not including any teachers? Uh, we, in, in this, this recent uh, committee about uh, revising the criteria, no, uh, we have, uh, we have not. Uh, there wasn't any discussion at, at that point unless, uh, if you remember any, any discussion about it, um, we can uh, we can certainly look at that uh, as well if you uh, feel like that the uh, the selection committee should uh, include uh, teachers. Um, the uh, one concern that I have also was just the number of people in the committee. Uh, because in the past we've had an even number, and we really need to have an odd number in order to mm -hmm. uh, be able to uh, to decide clearly whether somebody's going to be in or not. Um, in fact, last year we had one nominee that was a four and four. Very good uh, nomination, but did not have the majority votes. So, um, what the way it was set up in the past was the comprehensive high school principals, the two athletic directors, mm -hmm. the superintendent, and then three community members. Um, and uh, 
if again, if, if that is um, something that the board would uh, like to change, um, we can certainly take a look at that. Uh, it just becomes a little bit harder for a, a, nomina- a nomination, uh, a nominee to be able to be in the hall of honor. The more votes and the more people you have on the committee, uh, it, it becomes a little bit uh, harder in order to get into the hall uh, because it's, it's a little more difficult to get that majority. But um, we can certainly uh, we can certainly change that if we uh, do what the board feels like is appropriate. I think that the committee right now is perfect for the athletic hall of honor, but for the civic hall of honor, I mean, maybe the athletic directors don't need to be there, and instead we can have an elementary representative and secondary representative as a teacher, and you'll still have your same odd number. That does make sense. If I can jump in here, I'm really just not disagree with people who seem to be here. I'm going to just pull this out of everybody is saying what you want to Mr. Winston and Dr. Victoria, and things you would like to look at to put them right here. So right now we have a motion on the, um, to pass this. So what I believe motion is made a motion table because I'm hearing people want to do different things now that we got that in the open. So. One thing I would, oh, uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Sawyer. Uh, one thing I would uh, tell you is uh, whatever the board decides, if they decide to pass these changes or whatever, uh, these probably would take effect the following year because the submission process has already been opened up. And people are submitting according to that with current criteria. Okay. Uh, that's just my suggestion. Mr. Shaw? Thanks, This is for the next thing. Well, and there is a couple of things to be discussed because uh, I'm in agreement with uh, Dr. Salinas. I think that this uh, selection committee is a little bit too top of the Okay, so everybody want me to pull it, and then you all just send it back to the floor, yeah? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, next year, right. I mean, we're, we're working on this part, too. Right. Right. This part is right. 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 Okay, I'm going to pull five feet, and everybody send back to the floor. Here we go. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mason. Let's go to 5B. Consider to have action regarding approving appointments of three committee members for the Judson ISD Hall of Honor Selection Committee. Anybody want to go on page 19? Any other motion so we can discuss? One. Mr. Foyle, motion. Second. Dr. Phoenix. We have some people. Any nominations? Mm-hmm. You show up, you're going to get picked. Just go forward. I'm shaking my head. Just go forward. Go right ahead. Yes. I don't have any names. Did you like this? We can't vote on some we don't have names. So. Did you invite many names, Mr. Lincoln? Okay, Ms. Bashaw? The secretary, and I don't know what she did with them. I submitted two names. I thought that, I, I, that we were all supposed to. This is for this. I recommend uh, Mr. Randy Pennell and Mr. Sonny Merrill. You need one more. I only had one or two. The rest of you were supposed to come up with one. What area are you going to do? So they say you're running from one from each of the high school attendance. Now I know Sonny is always going to be a live oak. I don't know where Randy is going to be. I think he's in Congress. He's in Congress. He's in Congress. He's in Congress. So now what you're saying is unless they live in a particular area, they can't be. Can we pull this and put this on the right team? I think there needs to be some clarity on what you want. 
this is like some lesson Christ gave us here. It's right here, but how, how do we do this? Start the high school. Okay, we're going to get our attendance boundaries. Or the high school. Mr. President? Yes. I'd like to pull back my motion. For what? I'd pull my motion back. Do your motion back. Okay. 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 Let's do this. Everybody's in agreement. Everybody send Jackie to make a list. Okay. And it's picked up the agenda on the 19th. Is that a pleasure, everybody? So you have until Monday at the, the meeting on the 19th to put it on there. Is that okay? Anybody object to that? Okay. Okay. okay? That way you got some players. So we're going to put one person from each high school attendance zone. Okay, we're good. Alrighty, okay, let's do a discussion. Six. Superintendent report, Dr. Ventura. Uh, members of the board, very briefly, some of the activities we've been involved in. Uh, we went to a music and art assembly at Jefferson High School. Uh, we attended the county, uh, Bay County Superintendents meeting, which is also a regional meeting here with superintendents as to some of the needs or activities taking place. I also was on a committee with Northeast uh, Lakeview College on their strategic planning process. Also, I did a presentation with the Randolph Metrocom Rotary Foundation, uh, showing some information uh, about our district and, and other issues. And of course, uh, the group of board members did attend the Go Public training and, and meeting that, that was held in San Antonio. I also attended the Texas School Safety Board meeting, directors meeting in Austin. Uh, also attended the Scholastic Family and Community Engagement Symposium on including more community people. And I come across with ideas, and this will be something I'll share in the near future with the board. Uh, some ideas on how to increase more parental involvement in our schools. We also had our first, Jeff uh, had a homecoming football game. The very first game, it was uh, among the students themselves. They even had a homecoming dance and, 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 and homecoming officers, the very first ever. Uh, we had a Judson Education Foundation meeting this week. We also went to a high school, Southwest High School, to look at their cyber security program. That's a possible career program that we can look at in this district to offer our students. That is a very large growing area. And then, of course, we attended our monthly bond oversight committee, which we'll continue to do. We also met with the Baird County Juvenile Probation Officer and, and Program Manager to work out how the process will work for our students in the future as some of the new state laws that have been passed in Austin are implemented. And basically, that's it. Thank you. Let's say, uh, what are you say this up there? Oh, yeah, sure. Dr. Montoya, will you bring us, will you be bringing us some kind of data from Miami or whatever you Yes, we can uh, we can bring you some uh, some some ideas that we got. There were some very good ideas that we got uh, from other districts and on uh, involving parents. So let me let me put some materials together. I do know what we're saying. I'm not doing too much. I'm just would be interested in seeing why you would want to follow a suit or a well, actually, uh, we, we were involved with, I think there were about 100 districts across the U.S., and of course, Miami Dade was the big one there because that's where it was held. But uh, let me put some materials and information together for the board because there were some positive things that I think we might look at implementing in the district. Uh, members of the board, uh, last board meeting, we briefly spoke about uh, a, a model to help our district uh, keep legal expenses down. We shared it with you. We have shared it with you again. And very briefly, I'd like Mr. Sondor to speak about that process. Okay, board members, on, on page 100, 110 of the board book, there's the flow uh, chart that was distributed on the last board meeting. And just see the review again. And basically, what it is is it sets up a process for us to 
uh, an approval process for us to be able to contact an attorney so nobody can just pick up the phone and call legal without first going through the cabinet member and then through Dr. Montoya or getting his approval to uh, contact the, the, the attorney firm. And then after that, also a process for when we're going to pay the firm uh, to make sure there's a reconciliation of who, who made the phone call, what it was, what it was about, to make sure that we're actually paying for things that we're asking the attorneys to do. Um, it's a detailed flow chart. There's still some you know, things that we need to work through, and we're going to create some forms that will go along with this flow chart for our administration to use. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer them for you. Mr. Shaw? Yes, Mr. Chairman. This is very confusing to me. This, this, this looks very complicated. It is. Um, flow charts particularly are because there's a lot of decision points. So you have for every action that you that you have to you have to make a decision and have to say, okay, what do you do next? If it's a yes or no answer. And that's just unfortunate the nature of Well, let me just start at the beginning. Sure. The requested, which could be board member. Well, this particular these particular uh, seats do not address anything from the board members. This is just for administration. Okay. Well, you know, members, uh, you would obviously go to your president and you know, one of your staff that you know, if you needed to talk to a board, I don't think I'm not going to talk to that. Yeah, and here's yeah. And the board part of it, you still can call it, you know, Excuse me, folks are under tenure. That's not a problem because if you call them and it costs money, you know, you want to know about it. But if you call Cash anytime, you call Wall Street Angels anytime, as long as they're tenure, it doesn't prevent you from doing that. It's just if you call them and it costs money, you need to know about it. Mr. Forrest. In this flowchart, I understand that this is cabinet administration. Is there a some ways where we make the payments where we uh, decide, okay, let's say if I call a law firm and then we have a person bill, I didn't see where that one would work. So that's kind of what we were looking at. We are saying, okay, who is going to say, yeah, you know, this is a fair, sure. expensive Sure. On page 110, uh, it is, because on page 109 is just the approval as to how you would get authorization to contact the attorney. On page 110 is the reconciliation process. And there's an individual in our office who is a, one of the accountants who's been, going to be, uh, who has been designated as an individual to be responsible for doing that, for making sure that we reconcile the bills that we're getting from the attorneys back to the people who are make, actually making the phone calls to make sure that, yes, those calls were actually made and this is the time we spent on it, and yes, it's okay to pay that particular money. Because right now, we really don't have a way to check that. And so we're going to start down that road, and what we find is we move through it and we kind of identify the real issues. And at some point, um, and we'll work with Dr. Tony and the board to see if we need to bring the board into some kind of legislation process as well and what we're all comfortable with in doing that as well. But right now, this is really trying to just address the administration part of it. I believe we have a, uh, it wasn't a policy or procedure where if we needed to contact the attorney, we had to tell the superintendent and the board president, you know, and then let them know, hey, we're going to be talking as board members to Las Vegas or whoever. You know, and I think at that point, you know, there has to be some conversation between the board member and the board president to say, this is what we talked about. This is what, you know, we may be getting a bill for this or we may not, depending on if we're on that retainer and how much work they have to do. So, what you guys have other questions is anyone can call or you know, tell me anyone, but then they try to call me that you call. And then they tell me if it's going to cost money. If it costs money, now we have a discussion. So far, no one's giving you cost money from the board. It's all been under retainer. Okay, so it's not been an issue okay. with us. Because we got your team. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. So, five day board meeting. Right. We're ready. Okay. okay. And what this mechanism is also going to do is we're going to we're start to teach them that when the board wants to know what area is spending the money, is it um, human resources, is it our area, is it student, is it whatever, it is, that we're going to be able to provide you exactly where, what area is the money going to spend and how much that you have an idea. And we're going to have a kind of way for the board as well. So you will be able to see if the board is, if we're getting built for board items, what those are as well. Like when I look at this, there's a huge spike in legal fees in March. That's contract. 
Well, is that a real spike or is that a real, real, real spike? You know, is it justified? And we have no way to track it. Justified or not justified. Okay, 2015 equal employment outreach district information report. I think that's in the book. Dr. McCoy. Again, uh, board members, uh, you asked for some general information in that area, and uh, Ms. Hernandez is here if you have any direct questions. Mr. Shaw. Uh, Ms. Hernandez, is this just an annual report or does anybody do anything with it? It is my understanding that we provide this report to the board in October every year. And nothing else happens? It's just information that's provided to you so that you see um, the ethnicity by population, by location. And the principals, when they have this, this information, they can do something with it, can't they? I mean, when they look at these numbers, it looks as if they some of these numbers are low in a particular ethnicity. And if the campus principal sees the, this report, shouldn't they be doing something with this to make it more comparable to what the district would like to look like? Uh, Ms. Pichal, actually, this information will be monitoring in HR. Uh, the principals are, we pre-screen the candidates, the principals are interviewing the candidates based on the best qualified and making the recommendation on that. It's uh, our job in HR to ensure that we um, have a pool of applicants that is diverse and uh, pre-screened and referred to the principals for interviewing. There are some areas that are not diverse. Yes, ma'am. And that's the reason that we ask the question. Is it just a report or do you do anything about it? We are going to be doing something with this information now. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Flee? It's the report, Dr. Salinas, is by location, and it gives you the total count of employees at that location. So, for example, Judson Senior High School, total count of employees at that campus, 330, and that includes the uh, principals and the administration team on that campus. Seven oh one. Superintendent of Schools. Yes, that would be Ms. Barra's office. Are you looking at that? Yeah, it, it, that's three positions. That's the superintendent and the two secretaries. Oh, my, my apologies. Um, yes, we have um, three listed on there. By position? Which one? I'll, I'll get with the technology and ask for that. So you want it uh, just for clarity, Dr. Salinas, by, by position? And, and then location or just by position? Okay. All right. Mr. Worth. Can we also see at the campuses the breakdown, the, you know, the, by ethnicity on this report? Or we can, you know, so this, is like, this is by campus. Well, I, I'm not talking about. I'm talking about the student making. Oh, you want the employees? Oh, so you see the the student what student makeup is at that campus? We can provide that for you also. Yeah, uh, six three, uh, six three, 
A3, Professional Development Update, Dr. Ventura. Members of the board did not miss their message on the district professional development person was unable to be here, but very briefly, let me share some general information. Last school year, 1,164 training courses were offered, and there were 32,398 of our staff attended as a, as a, as a combined to go into those training sessions. This last summer, 2015, there were 64 courses, training courses, and four conferences were offered, and we had a total of 2,586 of our staff members that attended. And at the beginning of the year, the district professional development days, August 18th and 19th, the district offered 204 training courses, and the total attendance in those two days was 2,679. Now, this year, we're trying to do the uh, GT update hours because several people need that. We're also building in some customer service training for our staff at our campuses and our central office, also assisting the new teacher cohort, uh, being the new teachers to the district. Also, we had uh, some information that we needed to train people on the Microsoft Outlook program. In the future, one of the goals of this department, sub-department, is to create a uh, professional development advisory committee so that staff members and others can say these are some needed areas for professional development. And we also want to expand technology uh, offerings in that department. So again, briefly, that kind of gives you a quick overview. Mr. Shaw? Yes, uh, Dr. Monterey. Are these process goals or are these research goals? They're both. It depends on the need. Some of them are obviously to, to get results in certain areas, but some of them are to teach uh, some of our uh, staff members certain processes that they need to know and hopefully implement. So it, it, it's both. Okay, I'd like to see a plan okay. um, with a cost analysis of the goals for 2015, 2016, but these three items. Okay, again, let me make sure I get the cost analysis. We have said three items. So the goals, okay, the three goals are there. Okay, we'll get back to the Because these look like that they're process goals and not results goals. Well, let me get into the time to do that too. For both policy and the time to do it. Is that some new data? Thank you, For more policy, we've got to do into it. Next board meeting to get that done because this is not new day, this is putting day. Yeah, the board's got to vote for it. If we're something new, that's for board policy, is what I'm saying. Unless, unless we give Dr. Victoria a unit of 45 days for to do it. If you want to quit for board policy, you have to vote on it because it's not new day, it's new numbers crunching. That's for board policy, right, Jackie? So you want to give me time to do it? Or Absolutely. Do it? Okay. Is that okay, Dr. McGill? Yes. Yeah. So you don't want to force anything down on anybody, but that's no. more powerful. No, and again, like members of the board, we will get that to you, and since uh, we will have a reasonable time, but let me see if we put something together for you. <laughs> Dr. Salinas. Uh, Dr. McGill, I don't know, does Ms. Dennis, does she work with both Ms. Farah and Ms. Austin, or? Ms. Austin? Go ahead, Ms. Austin. Yes, yeah, she, she <laughs> is my member supervisor, so she works with me. Okay, can you help her get um, ESL certification? I know how critical that is for all of our students. And I see that we have 80 participants. Do we have numbers on how many of those actually followed through then after the training course to actually get their certification? Uh, we'll have to pull those numbers. Okay, I'll have to get those in the course work. And then also, can we get the evaluation results? Yes, we can. To see how the sessions work for her. I'm good with either combination or broken up, however she has it. Okay. I don't want her to do extra, but I know that we ask for evaluations by teachers to see how, how when, what they thought of, of the courses. Okay. Yes, we can. Thanks. Thank you. Special update. Dr. Ventura. Again, this is a, a monthly. Uh, we are continuing to finish our new high school. And at the same time, we're doing some stuff in some of our established schools that may have some needs. So, Mr. Fields, if you want to give a brief report. Construction one is one of the major construction in Maggie High School. We're about 76% complete. Uh, construction 
instructional one as we are on time and under budget. And uh, the, the diagram that we give you for the construction report is divided into the areas that go from A through G, A, B, and C are the academic areas, D being the dining hall, and E, F, and G are the athletic areas. Um, I don't want to regurgitate all the stuff that we've given you already. I'm open for any questions that you have. Any specific questions? Okay, let's go into a B policy update one and two affecting local policy and first reading. I have to read all these, unfortunately. B1, CDA, local other revenues slash investments. B2, DBB, local employee requirements and restrictions. Medical examinations and communicable diseases. B3, DEA, local compensation and benefits dash compensation plan. B4, DEAA, local compensation plan incentives and stipends. B5, DEAB, local compensation plan, wage and hourly wages. B6, DFFA, local reduction in force, financial extendability. I can say that word. Extendability. There you go. B7, DHE, local employee standard of contact, conduct. Searches, alcohol slash drug testing. B8, FNC, local student rights and responsibilities to our student code. B9, FO, local student discipline. Those are the first three. Okay, let's go to 6C. Update on county department. I'll put on there by Mr. Sleeve. You want to do something here? And again, members of the board, you did receive a summary. I think uh, Mr. Gonzalez is here. If there's any questions uh, on that, on, on that piece. Well, one thing I'll tell you is that we are going to be on the website. I think uh, we can, Mr. Lindstrom, let's make sure the first reading of all these are on the website. You know, from the terms of the policy update 102. Okay. D, discussing the new high school yeah. and road. Question uh, to council. Okay, go ahead. So, Mr. Cox, thanks for, for putting this together and having Dr. McCoy give this to us. Um, these were direct, uh, I guess, guidance counselors, but uh, the college counselors, is that data put in here as well? No, sir, that did not include the okay. college and the um, Okay. Right now, we currently have uh, one college readiness counselor at Wagner and at Jefferson. We have one at Jack Oakley. There is one college readiness counselor at Wagner and one at Jack Oh, excuse me, one at Wagner and one at Jefferson. Okay. Uh, I guess my question is are we meeting with enough students, uh, our college counselors? Uh, and I, I ask that because I don't know if that's a continual uh, aspect of the job for our counselors. To discuss college or career readiness paths and then having discussions with students or meetings with students. We could pull the data to, to present to the board to show the total number of student, individual student contacts as well as the increase in college applications that um, has been uh, really a direct result of the college readiness process. Yeah, that's a, that's a good measuring to see what that looks like. Um, and then there was a report several years ago, uh, I'm sorry, I can't think of it. Where we were a little behind in terms of our counselor to student ratio. Um, where are we now in terms of that? Are we still uh, so are we in it? In one of the documents that was submitted for your review, it gives the breakdown of the recommendations in the historical going from 2011 2012 to the current and with what the recommendation is for the district. Our high school, our current high school ratio is 338 to 1, which, which in essence leads the city in the lowest high school ratios. Our middle school overall ratio is 331 to 1, which is, is pretty comparable with surrounding districts. But the recommendation that is being made is to increase our elementary counseling staff by 10.5 um, allocations to have comparable ratios of what we have in the secondary campuses. Our, our current ratio right now for the uh, elementary school counselors is 641. Okay, I'll, I'll 
Dr. Montoya, uh, yeah, Dr. Montoya, I had, uh, with talking to you one time, I had asked about a personnel allocation on uh, tax reasons. You know, looking at the numbers that Mr. Fox put out there, you know, the elementary has gotten to the point where, you know, those problems that those kids have, we got to start getting to them soon. And so I think we need more help in order to bring that ratio down. But for the longest time, our high school, back when my daughter was in high school, there were, you know, they had high numbers per cancer, and, you know, we're addressing that. But, you know, problems that kids are having in the elementary school nowadays are, you know, they're pretty significant. And I think, I'm sure Mr. Clark would agree that, you know, more counseling, more counselors are needed in those positions. I think uh, over time we can put uh, ideas together, obviously, to bring to the board. And it goes along with what's available economically in terms of funding. And secondly, what about the classroom teachers and certain departments may also need more teachers and all of that. But bottom line in the counseling area is let us explore ideas and see what we can bring. Thank you very much. On page 175, where you have projected numbers for 15, 16, are those still projected numbers or are those actual numbers? No, ma'am, those are actually lower than the actual um, current ratios of the campuses. So we have an increase, for example, you can look at um, Masters Elementary, where it says 727 to 1. That campus is actually closer to 790 right now. So that ratio would be 790 to 1. So can we get actual numbers? Yes, ma'am. Uh, one thing I know when I first got on board, we had social workers. And I, I don't know what the mix is. I mean, I, I, I agree with Mr. Flora. You know, these, these kids have issues. You know, if you don't, uh, if you don't have a bed to sleep in, you don't have a meal when you go home. But, you know, I mean, counselors do a good job counseling, but there's a part of the, you know, the social worker is, is a gateway person. You know, they know all the places to get help for these people. And, I mean, y'all do some job, but there's, there's a part of this that is social work. Correct. And I, I know it's going to cost some money, but I'd like to see for budget time, you know, what, what's an effective way to use social work. And I think we had social workers here. They were effect, used effectively. They weren't used the correct way. I mean, there's the correct way and the wrong way for everything. I just, I think the correct way to integrate our counselors is our social workers. Dr. Salinas. I had social workers at Coronado Village, and then, I don't know who was on the board, but we mysteriously had to not have them anymore, and if we had them, we had to pay for them out of our own campus funds, so that's what I did at Kirby Middle School, and they were very effective for all of the students. I agree. We need them back. Okay. We got rid of them. Um, right in. That's what I'm saying. We're going to do it. And again, that will be another area we can do the research and, and see what's, what's realistic and feasible and obviously we need to make it a Okay. Well done. Again, uh, for the public, there's a major lawsuit in Texas on funding of public schools, and it is appearing that it's, it's, it's going to the Texas Supreme Court right now, and also uh, possibly the governor calling another legislative session sometime in the spring to look at school funding, but everything's still up in the air right now. Anyone else? Okay, do you discuss the name of your high school on Ellen Road or Mackey High School? Um, we all listen to you. I want to give the board an opportunity to, to express their opinions. Mr. Nancy is also one of this on the agenda, so um, we'll just go from there. Um, my name's also, I, I know there's a lot of controversy here, but I guarantee you folks can give it the right way. It was advertised for four weeks, we asked for input. I think the mistake we probably made, I think people made assumptions, this was a vote. It wasn't a vote, it was suggestions. I apologize for that. But 
criteria was published, okay? There was 400 suggestions and all were multiple, but a lot of them did not meet the present criteria that was established by the board, okay? Now, the other thing I want to do, I'm not going to talk about the goods or bads of Dr. Matthews, I'm going to talk about what I heard tonight. You know, I think a lot of people want to cut their nose off to spite their face on this. People are saying, well, I won't wait for a bond, I won't do that. That's okay. Doesn't hurt me. Hurt the kids. And I'll tell you what will happen. If we don't have a bond, we will put portables. And Universal City is already on law portables. So the next step when you ask the portables is either one, re district our schools to meet the 21, 22, to 23, or we bus kids north and south, south and north, where there's empty chairs. I don't want to do that. I'm sure anybody out there wants to do it. But, you know, you, you, you've been around a while, you don't need my big soap box as well. Mr. Harper knows it. Well, portable. Portable costs $100,000. It comes out as operation maintenance. You take two teachers out of the school that year to buy a portable to put two teachers in. Portable lasts five to seven years. You build, you have a bond, that money comes out of your debt service. So every time you put a portable, you take two teachers out of the classroom to pay for a portable that only lasts five to seven years. So be mad at me, be mad at this board, you know, but don't take it out on the kids. You know, I think it's absolutely ridiculous and it's boring to stand up there and say that I'm not going to vote for the bond because the board did something. The other thing is board five and two voted for this high school. We did it the right way. If we change it now, that means we have no credibility. And what that means is that any decision where the wind blows a little rough, okay, we're going to change our mind. So, okay. Mr. Messias. I just want to commend everyone that stayed late. I know that some people spoke earlier and they're still here and so. It's a late meeting for all of us, and so thank you for that. Um, I was uh, very moved by the commentary by our citizens today. I think that um, as elected officials, our biggest responsibility is to be responsive to our community. Any elected official that fails to listen to their community will not be an elected official very long. Um, I will say that I do agree with Mr. Stelio on one point, that the anger is... Uh, towards a bond would be inappropriate, and we would hurt our kids. We do need to move forward with a bond, and we do need community to, the community to support that initiative. But uh, any anger that, that resides in an individual um, obviously should be focused on making us accountable. And apparently that's how the process works. If you feel that you're not represented appropriately or if we're not listening, we don't need to be here. And I'll, say the, I'll be the first to say that, you know, I made a mistake with my vote. And so that I will change my vote and ask that you have this item back on the agenda for November to consider it again. Uh, it's the right thing to do. And I might not have the majority here. Anybody that puts their foot down and says we're not going to change it because of credit, credibility issues is losing sight really truly on the process of being responsive. And so I, for one, really embrace being responsive to my community. Uh, one other thing, too, that I want to say is that uh, names matter. I, I had said at the last meeting that I wouldn't lose any sleep because I'm trying to look at the overall mission of our district, new facilities, SAT scores, college and career readiness. Those are things that, that really identify and define our district. But um, the mistake is that, that na names do matter. And uh, someone like Dr. Mackey, who I had the opportunity to work with for uh, several years, um, was a leader that was divisive. I mean, there's really no other way to put it. Many leaders with centuries were divisive, so it's nothing new. But it may be too soon. It may be a point where it, it's still too fresh. I will tell you one thing that uh, I often disagreed with the administration was the fact that we were losing teachers. Our attrition rate was the, the high. I think only some of that ISD was higher than ours. And so for that to, to be part of the legacy of the Matthew administration, it says something. And I would like to think that people that spoke today had a connection. They were former employees, or they were current employees, or they were family of 
employees. So we can't take that lightly. Um, we will not look like we're indecisive for the change of mind. We truly just need to reapproach this process. I think our current policy is flawed. So in conjunction with trying to revisit this, I will actually ask for the agenda to include a revisit of our policy. Um, it is funny, and, and I was in agreement that Mr. Flores joked earlier in this process that we should name the school Lincoln High School. And I said, you know, I don't, I, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good idea. It, it took away the politics of the name, and it gave credit to, to someone that was a great leader in our country. But our policy did not allow us to do that. So we kind of locked ourselves into a criteria that uh, didn't broaden it. I'm going to tell you, Northside probably has a very good process because they award schools by judges. That's, that's awesome. Um, I do like the idea, though, personally, that we can recognize people in our community. I think that's what makes Justin great. I mean, I've only been here for 13 years, but I mean, we are a family, and we're going to move forward together that way. But we have a situation that is, is divisive now, and it could impact our bond. Again, I'm going to urge anyone here that's thinking that to still support the bond because we do need it. But if it means that much for someone to be angry, then it's our job to really try to rectify and, and resolve that anger. And so uh, I just wanted to put on the record this point that I would like to see some of these gentlemen who can take action. That's all for right now. Mr. Foy, if you were trying to win me over tonight, by what you said, you didn't accomplish nothing. All you did is make me mad. I don't like people looking me up and saying, I'm not going to vote for you if you don't do what I want you to do. That ain't the way to go after things. And as far as not voting for the bond, you're hitting the kids, you're not hitting none of us. The kids don't need what need new schools. The kids need new buses. The kids need everything they can get to make an education for them. So if that's what you're going to do, go ahead and do it. I don't care. But don't ever threaten to be on the board. Well, I do care. Um, I'm a former student. Some of you out there were my teachers. And I'm my colleagues. Former teacher here at Judson. Former assistant principal and principal. Current board member, current community member. I've been in the district for 40 years. And I think maybe the only other person up here is Mr. Shunk, who can say student, teacher, and now board member. Um, I do want to um, commend Mr. Sawyer because I did speak with him privately after one of our sessions, and I said, we've got to do something. Um, we, have, we have got to do something because we have too many people who need to be heard. Um, that's our job, is to hear people, regardless of whether it was on September 16th or today. And, and he did, and he gave me his word, and he said, I'm going to put out a letter, and he did, and then he said, I'm going to put it as a discussion item, and he did, so thank you. President Sawyer for keeping your work. I appreciate that. Um, a couple of things from today. I do think that we owe the community the survey results. We ask them because the policy says an individual group of citizens or any organization may make a proposal to the board, and that's what we asked for. We want a proposal, and we did get quite a few. And people need to know what were the results. How many people nominated Clarence Alberts? 25. Robert B. Evans High School, 24. Christopher Balthazar, 23. Thomas E. Parsons, 15. Dr. Willis Matthew, 13. Dr. Helen Rip, 10. And then some that didn't qualify. Um, like Mr. Messias said, I agree our policy needs to be revised. Um, and Mr. Um, Salyer and I discussed that also. And some people today make, made a, a comment about maybe we need to do the top three. Maybe that's what we needed to do. I don't know. But we didn't do that. And we did vote as a board. I do too, right now for Matthew High School, and if Mr. Messias is going to put it back on the agenda, we'll see. I um, don't know what will happen. But I do believe and I do care about everyone out there, and I can disagree with people on this board and still have ultimate respect for them. And because um, that's what we're supposed to do, we're not supposed to agree on everything, but we are supposed to have consensus, and that's what we have right now um, is consensus. But I, I also heard from a couple of people. Where were you on the 16th? 
So if that's the precedent that this board is setting, I'm all for it. Let's have the community out here. If we want to hear from community members because we're going to make our decisions based on who speaks, whether it's four people for one candidate and one person for someone else, then okay, then those four people influence the board. So if that's what we want, then let's do it. And we, need, we do need to get the fear factor out of the district because it is there. Because people do fear coming to speak and talk. I don't anymore because I don't have to be anymore. And I don't think anyone else has to be scared anymore either. So thank you. Continue to share your voice. Continue to email us. We got quite a few today. Continue to post on Facebook. Continue to post on JBlog. Because we're here because of you. Thank you. Mr. Forrest. Thank you. Um, again, like Mr. LaFoyle said, you know, if you want to take me off this board, I can afford to take it. You know, it's, uh, you know that, that I've seen this board change through the years. Not just the one I've been on in the late 90s, early 2000s, turn of the century. We had a board that was, uh, came on with the one item agenda, and that was to get rid of the superintendent. And they did. But then, it went downhill real fast. So they got what they wanted done, but you know, then you'd have board members coming to meetings and they'd just be opening their packs. You had more unprepared board members during that time. And uh, it wasn't pretty. I mean, and then it, it took a while. It put the district back further, I think. You know, like Mr. Sally said, we had a posted meeting. It was, le- it was a legal meeting. We didn't do anything under the table, it was a posted meeting that everybody had the opportunity to come to. You know, at, uh, now, for whatever reason you couldn't come to it, well, that's, that's you know, that's what it is. If, these, if this petition had been here with that night and and said something, then there would have been cause to really think about it. But. Hearing the people that spoke tonight, of the 14 or 15 that spoke against it, three had suggestions for names. And that doesn't look right to me. You're not voting for something, you're voting against it. You're saying, I don't want this name. You know, and uh, to me, that just doesn't sit well. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Like I said, we have probably done this better. I'll personally apologize for that, but we went by what the board criteria, what board policy was. If anybody doubts that, look it up, see the process. And like Dr. Singer says, anyone can have anything. It's open. We can put it on the, uh, let's put it on the uh, website tomorrow. We can put it on the website. I think, that, like I said, the inference was, I think people thought they were voting on something. That wasn't our intent. That wasn't what the policy said. So. We're going to move forward. This is a good board, ladies and gentlemen. This is a good board. We don't always disagree, and we won't, but look where we were eight years ago. Look where we're at now. We have a new superintendent. He's going to take us farther. We've got a good, solid board right now. So we ask for your support. I know the temperatures are flaring. I'm going to put this in, in perspective. 24,000 students, that's 48,000 parents somewhere. 90 J blog entries. I personally got seven emails from... The day we named the school, so yesterday I got seven more today. I got 14 emails of a whole new to my email account. To me, that is not a lame slide of anything. You know, I mean, I'm sure, you know, change.org. I don't read change.org. You know, I don't know where these people are from. I have an email on my Justin Board homepage. It's an email anytime, and everyone knows that. I didn't look at change.org. I'm just going to tell you, I get because it's not. You know, the privy is J Block, we talk to us, J Block, and our email. That's what counts. I don't care if it's 2,000, I'm sure there's people out there, but it's very easy to sit on your pajamas and push a button. It takes a lot for you people to come down here and sit in the room, sit for an hour and a half to listen to people and listen to us, and sit down and write a, a decent, professional email to one of the board members. 
Thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. We got uh, Dr. Sweeney. Sorry, Mr. Sonny. Sure. I just think we need to use very caution when we quantify things. So if we're going to say J blog matters, but then you say 90 entries on J blog doesn't matter. Yeah. So if numbers matter, then numbers matter. Otherwise, we don't quantify it. Because on the 16th, we had five people speak. I think four for one candidate who won and one for another. And so are the, are the numbers going to matter or not? And so just, I just think we need to use caution when we quantify things. Well, I just think that 90 people on j and 14 emails to me is not a way of emotion on any side. Right. And my point is then, what's the number? Do we need to have 50 or well, right. well, right. That's my number. Right. Right. That's my number. That is correct. Out of 48,000 parents, 90,000 voters, I get 40 emails. I agree. That's not a way with anything. How many voters did you have? That's what I feel. Well, what matters to me is the entire district because I, I represent the whole district, not just the and I'll say to you that uh, of all the emails on any issue of the five years I've been on this board, this is the one that has I've seen more in terms of the response from the community. It's kind of odd because there's, there's so many other issues. But this one, so I, those 14 emails represent a lot more than just 14 people. Mr. LaFleur. Well, um, I haven't seen six emails today, and I don't know how many there are. I read every one of them. On those emails, nobody threatened to kick me out of the office. Nobody told me to, to not vote for the uh, bond. The thing is, folks, you've got to look at what you did. We make our own decisions. You can talk to your blue and face to me. If I say I want to paint that wall orange, that's what I think. I may not win, but I'll still think it. So you really don't know me very well. And the thing judging me on one vote, I make is not fair. Judge me on what I did during the 12 years I've been on this board. I did many things for all districts, mostly children. I've got a lot of changes made at children. So if you want to judge me for one vote I'm going to make, go ahead. I don't care. I want to go fishing anyway. Okay, okay let's move on. Okay, we're going to pull SAT. Update Board Advisory Committee. This is Mr. Shaw. Mr. Shaw. We're going to advise you. You got anything to advise you? Update? Anything? No, Mr. Flores. No, we had a, we had a, the Internal Audit Committee uh, talking to Mr. Ashmore. And uh, I, I assume that they're working on the official report. Hopefully, we'll have something more than this. Mr. Seals, anything? No. Mr. Hall? Nothing? You got to go on that next. Advisory committee. We're good. Okay. Update board training conference events. Consider future denial. Mr. Shaw. I just wanted to get some clarity. I brought the calendar that we got from the NR board book. Mm hmm. Documentary, if I may, I'd like to speak with Ms. Bates. Ms. Bates, on the um, 20th of this week, it says Jordan has been dangerous to the beginning of the year, according to the school of 79. The invitation that we got says, we're going to stay at 7 p.m., which one is good? Uh, yeah, well, we all went to the conference, and it was a really good conference, and I'm glad that Dr. Montoya took the staff. And uh, the whole story that you heard, a lot of the same things that we're hearing, where we come up with our ideas, because that's, uh, and I think it helps. And we do have a special meeting, a uh, special workshop set up for Monday, just to go over some of the ideas that we heard. 
I think that would be also very important. Thanks. Mr. Mysterious, anything? No, I just wanted to really echo the change of leadership of the community, Dr. Matoya. Bringing the cabinet uh, to the conference is very helpful. And, uh, it's a great move and again, good energy. Uh, I'm sorry I'm going to miss Monday's meeting. I'm going to the recap, but uh, I'm sure a lot of good things are coming out of that. Mr. Lafora? Someone being fair here, Dr. Salinas. Dr. Victoria, just very quickly, if board members will look at the wall to your left, there's three pictures up there. We're going to highlight our kids in the district every few weeks, so we'll be taking pictures of our kids and our staff doing things, and we'll put them up there for the community, for the board, and for others to see. And then we'll save them and kind of do a uh, in the hallway or somewhere where we move them there. But every few weeks, we'll see a new set of pictures of, of our kids doing some great things and our staff doing some great things. Anything else? It's being adjourned at 1130.